In this video, we will learn to name different binary compounds. Having specific names for chemical compounds is important to ensure that there's no ambiguity when referring to a substance. Binary compounds are chemical substances made up of two different elements. There are two possibilities for binary compounds. They could be either made up of two nonmetals or one metal and one nonmetal. We use different naming systems for each of the two possibilities. Let's start with binary compounds made up of two nonmetals, also called molecular compounds. When you have two nonmetals forming a binary compound, we have multiple possible combinations for the same two elements. For example, these two compounds are both made up of carbon and oxygen. So how do we distinguish the two? Well, for compounds made up of two nonmetals, we use Greek prefixes according to the number of atoms of the elements in the compound. Here's a table with all the Greek prefixes we will need. On top of that, we change the end of the name of the second element to IDE. Let's see how this would apply to the compounds we have on the screen. This one only has one carbon and one oxygen, so we name it carbon monoxide. However, since this one has one carbon and two oxygens, we name it carbon dioxide. Note that if we only have one atom of the first element, the prefix mono is usually dropped. Let's take a look at a few examples. What is the name of this compound? That's right, since we have one phosphorus and three chlorines, the name of this compound is phosphorus trichloride. Let's try another one. What is the name of this compound? Since this compound has two nitrogens and five oxygens, we call it dinitrogen pentoxide. It's important to mention that there is a third category of elements besides metals and nonmetals, metalloids. Metalloids correspond to the elements in this region of the periodic table. Some binary compounds are made up of a metalloid and a nonmetal, but they follow the same nomenclature rules as binary compounds made up of two nonmetals. Let's move on to the second category. When the two elements that make up a binary compound are a metal and a nonmetal, we start by first writing out the name of the metal. Then, we write out the name of the nonmetal, but change the end of the name to IDE. For these binary compounds of a metal and a nonmetal, also called ionic compounds, we do not use Greek prefixes no matter how many atoms of each element are included. So for example, if we had this compound, we'd start out by writing the name of the metal, which is sodium, and then of the nonmetal, chlorine, but making sure to change the end of chlorine from INE to IDE. So the name of this compound is sodium chloride, which is the main component of table salt. What would be the name of this binary compound? That's right. The metal in this compound is potassium, and the nonmetal is bromine. But you have to change the ending of bromine from INE to IDE. So the name of this compound is potassium bromide. Let's do another one. What would be the name of this other compound? Since we have magnesium as our metal and iodine as our nonmetal, we name this compound magnesium iodide. Notice that we do not do anything special because there are two iodines in this compound. As we said before, we never use Greek prefixes for ionic compounds. Why, you ask? That's a really great question. It's because the atoms in these compounds are actual ions, and these elements make very specific ions. Iodine always makes the iodine ion, which always has a single negative charge. Alkaline earth metals like magnesium always make ions that have a 2 plus positive charge. So the neutral ionic compound made from magnesium and iodide will always have one magnesium 2 plus ion and two iodide 1 minus ions, magnesium iodide. Let's try this one. Oxygen makes an anion with a 2 minus charge. Lithium is an alkali metal, so its ion will always have a plus one charge. What is the correct ionic compound made from oxygen and lithium? Since lithium is the metal, it goes first, and the name of the compound is lithium oxide. Notice that we replace the end of the element's name, YGEN, with IDE, like before. Because we want the neutral ionic compound, we need two lithium ions, each with a plus one charge, and one oxide ion, with its negative two charge. So, to summarize, ionic compounds form between a positively charged metal ion and a negatively charged non-metal ion. We name them first by using the name of the metal, followed by the non-metal's name, replacing the end of the name with IDE. Finally, one note about ionic compounds. Things get a little trickier for metals that aren't alkali metals, group 1, or alkaline earth metals, group 2. 
but that will be a topic of a later video.